Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Current Dependent Inductor Modeling and Answer to LT Spice Inductor Riddle. Earlier, I have posted the riddle that goes like this. In LT Spice, there is a possibility to make an inductor current dependent. To do that, you point on it, then Control plus right click, you'll get this window, which is the attribute editor, and then you have this equation that you put in. So let's have a look at here. This equation expresses the flux, magnetic flux, within this inductor as a function of the current through it. This is the current through the inductor. The x is the current through the inductor. Now this is, of course, is just an example, and you are supposed to be able to put any equation here which connects the flux, makes the flux as a function of the current. On the other hand, commercial inductors are also current dependent, and the information about the inductance is given normally this way. This is the, I'll call it a derivative or local inductance as a function of the bias of DC current. In this particular inductor, this is a V-shade, it's just an example. We start with 100 microhenry and are going down to about 50 when the current, the DC, is 3M. So this is the information that is given by vendors. And the question was how to translate the data of the inductance as a function of the current given by manufacturer to an empty spice equation for the flux. So it will emulate the commercial inductor. So this was the question. Now, before answering the question, let me show a very simple current dependent inductor model that you can implement in any spice based or any circuit simulator, including LT spice. So, here is the way it goes. We start with the information given by the manufacturer. This is the derivative or local inductance as a function of the bias current. The way it is measured is the following. The inductor is subjected to current, DC current. This should be a high impedance source. It could be built around a, say, MOSFET. And then you measure the inductance this is the local small signal inductance at any given point as a function of the current. That is, you do it for different current, and this is how you generate this curve. So this inductance is the local inductance at a given DC current. This means that I can now write the state equation for the inductor locally as V is equal to the local inductance, which is a function of the current, times the IDT, which is the classical state equation for the inductor. Now, instead of LD here, this term here, I can put here an approximation to the inductance. In this particular case, I can approximate this behavior as a straight line, starting from 100 microhenry to 50, and here we have a change of 3m. So it comes to be this equation, 100 minus 50 over 3, 50 is the difference, times i, which is the current from 0 to 3, and this will be in microhenry. So once I have this, and I have this expression, I can actually model this inductor as a voltage source that will behave like this this expression here, times the IDT, this will be a behavioral voltage-dependent source. Now, in empty spice, we do have this behavioral voltage source, it's called BV, here it is, and also in most circuit simulators, we do have operators like derivative, okay, time derivative. So, I can just translate this equation into this behavioral source. V, this is the voltage here, is equal to the IDT. This is the derivative of the current. In this case, I've 
taken this current, I could have taken this current or put here a voltage source of zero voltage and refer to the current in it. There are many ways to do that. So this is the derivative of the current. And here I have the approximation of this curve that I've shown earlier for the LD, for the local inductance as a function of the current. For any given current, you have a different inductance. So this is just translating the state equation into a voltage source. And this works very nicely. For example, with a bias of zero, we know that LD should be 100 microhenry. And as it turns out, then the voltage, this is the current, and then the green is the voltage. And it turns out that the voltage is one volt. For this excitation, which is about 1.5 milliamp, I've just tuned it, so I'll get one volt at the output. This voltage is, is of course, equal to the current times 2 pi f and the local inductance, which is 100, and the frequency is 1 megahertz. And then if I change the bias to 3 amp, and with the same excitation, I get, I get 0.5 volt because the inductance went down to 50 microhenry. So it works very, very nicely for small signal. These are relatively small signal. But then if you expose the inductor to a large signal, you see this nonlinearity due to the dependence of the inductance on the current. Here I expose it to 5 amp. This is actually beyond the 3 amp, just to emphasize uh, the phenomena. And uh, it works very nice. This is now this uh, is the excitation, and the green is the voltage across the inductor, as you would expect. So this is a very, very simple way to represent a current-dependent inductor. Now, going back to LT spice, what they did here is the following. They are using flux. And we know, due to Faraday law, that V is equal to N, number of terms, the phi dt, and this is the flux. Now, I can absorb this into here, call this, say, a total flux, so not to deal with the numbers. So the voltage is a function of the derivative of this term. And this is exactly what they are talking about. That is, the model that they have is apparently based on this equation. So for this, you need to know what is the flux, because the model is taking the derivative of the flux. Now, in this example, they've used the Tangle's hyperbolic function, which looks like this graphically. And this sort of resembles a BH curve. So this is a good template to approximate the behavior of a given uh, ferrite core, okay? But this is, of course, not a must. In some cases, uh, this template will not fit very well. And in some other cases, you'd like to have another template, another type, maybe a polynomial approximation. So how can we find what is this equation? This is the question that I'm posing here. And this was the question of the riddle. So let me explain how we get to it. We start with this state equation that I've shown earlier, okay? And I go to the Faraday's law equation, again, absorbing the in into it. So you see that we have here V is LD di dt, and here V is d phi dt. So now I can, rather than having this expression, divide it by delta i, and then add the term delta i over delta t. So this is, in fact, the phi dt, except that I've added these two terms here. This is a well-known trick. So what happens is that if I compare now this equation to this equation, the i dt is the same, I come to the conclusion that the phi di is equal to LD, because this term is the same. So I understand now that LD is equal to the phi di, therefore phi is the integral of LD di. So in our particular example, I found that LD is 100 minus 16.6i, this is 50 over 3. 
The integral of this is 100i, 8.33, i squared. So this is the equation that I'm to, supposed to put here because this now represents the flux. Got it from here. But hold on, using it like this will not give you proper result. The reason is that this equation cannot handle negative current. Now you'd like to have a model that can handle positive and negative current, and this is only correct for one quadrant. So you, in order to get it uh, sort of bidirectional or bipolar, you have to modify it a bit. And to, the way to modify it is as follows. First of all, I'll put here the absolute value of i. This is now i in this equation. And I don't have to put it here because this is square, so it's always positive. And then I have to put a sign on this thing. And I put the sign by taking the current, dividing it by the absolute value of the current. So this gives me the sign of the current. So now the flux is plus minus. Notice that in the Tangent's hyperbolic function, this comes in built in. This is why it is a handy template. But in this case, I don't want to use it, so I have to add this sign feature. So now I'm going to compare side by side the two models. One is the very simple basic model. What it is, is just the state equation. Here it is. The derivative of i, the i dt, times the equation that describes the dependence of the LD on I. So this is very, very simple. And here, this is the LT spice model. And now I've put this equation for the flux. What it is, is that first of all, I have this 100 times I, and this is the absolute value of the current. And then I square, this is micro Henry. And then I have the sign here. Okay, this is the sign. So this is the LT spice model. This is the basic model. And now I'm running these two together for a bias current, DC bias current of 3 amp. And I've just put one on top of the other. You see that they are exactly the same. They're getting the 0.5 volt as we've seen before. Now I'm increasing the current to 5 amp in the two cases. Now I've separated them and you see that for the basic and the LT spice, I'm getting exactly the same. So these two models are properly describing the current dependent inductor. So what's the conclusion? When properly said, the LT spice current dependent inductor model works fine, no problem. However, the basic model that is based on the inductor state equation is simpler to set and it's highly compatible with the LD data that is given by data sheet. The only thing you have to do is just to approximate this curve, that's it. While here, you have to go through some integral and then also to worry about the polarity. So it'll be compatible with positive and negative current. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention, I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.